What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Bottom Sprocket. This is episode six, and today we are talking beginner maintenance tips. Uh, we are starting to get into the riding season. It's time for you to uh, decrustify that motorcycle that's been sitting in your garage for a few months. And if this is your first time picking up a wrench uh, with your motorcycle, we've got a handful of nice tips for you. Uh, I've got a few that I've learned. I'm sure you've got some nice horror stories, too. Always. Uh, Josh, I know you have just been working on carby bikes since you started riding, so I'm sure you have plenty of insight there. Uh, and then we're going to do a little bit more rating of Discord Boy motorcycles. Next week, we will be returning to the meme contest, and we'll have more details on that later in the show. With all that being said, let's dive on in. Nice. That was a good intro. Uh, yeah, yeah, good intro, intro, man. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like after six episodes, we're starting to figure this out. Yeah, it feels good. All right. So uh, maintenance tips for beginners. I feel like there's a handful of things that you could look at for like tools to buy, things to do, um, places to start and knowing when to call it. So my first tip that I would recommend is have a decent set of tools. You don't need to run out and buy the fanciest thing in the world. Um, I was, I was actually, I mentioned this in the Q and a portion of the video that went live a couple of days ago. Um, you can get for a hundred dollars from craftsman at Lowe's a really nice mechanics toolkit. It's got mm -hmm. most of the stuff that you'll need to get started. The only thing I looked at it, the only thing that wasn't in there was a set of, um, Allen keys that are three eighths ratchet adaptable. That's not in there. So you would just run over to Harbor freight tools and pick one up for $10. So $110 and you have a great, great toolkit. And that is going to save you so much time and headache because if you're using like crappy tools, like you get it like target, they're going to fall apart. They're not going to sit right on the, um, on the bolts and stuff that you're trying to take out. You'll strip bolts out. They might break on you. I actually had a ratchet break that nice. came out of a uh, target toolkit one time. Um, they're just, they're not designed. I want to know work. why you had a target toolkit. Cause I was broke and I didn't have anything to, <laughs> I, I would feel like stuff like it, like that at target is way more expensive. I, I mean, well, maybe it was just by proximity. It was, and... it was literally just like a little toolkit that big and fun, it had like five tools in it. Fun fact, my toolkit that was that size came from a meth addict who broke into my Jeep and left it there. <laughs> I, I still have tools. it because <laughs> that guy. That's like reverse crime at yeah, that point. Well, you I, broke in and left stuff in your car. He was in my Jeep and I'm like, um, excuse me. He's like, what? I'm looking for something. I left it in here and I was like, yeah, you got to go, my guy. And then he left his shit and I was like, oh, I'll keep it. <laughs> the, the meth Easter bunny. Yeah, exactly. He paid you um, for it? Dang. <laughs> I think that uh, after having some nice tools, the one thing I would recommend is don't use power tools with the exception of the auto ratcheting wrench that I have now. Ooh. I bought for a hundred bucks. It's so you now you're at $210, uh, an auto ratcheting wrench that's up to 40 foot pounds of torque that it can take. Um, it's so good for pulling bolts out of a bike. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen one of these or used one. No. It's awesome. Yeah. So you, how does I'll, it work? You just you put your you put a little battery in it. It's got oh, it's got a little battery. It comes with two batteries. Oh, um, long and they two. charge up in like yeah, they charge up in like an hour. Um really really fast and they last a long time. And it's got one of those like multi-stage triggers so it can go slow and it can go fast mm -hmm. and then it literally just ratchets mm -hmm. for you. Whoa. So you don't even have to turn the ratchet it's anymore. It's the future. It's the future. Uh, I was wow. using it on the van when I was first taking all the engine shit apart because my buddy has one. And then I was like, oh, I have to buy one. So I did. And that's awesome. But that's that, killer. yeah, it's it's the greatest little thing. Um, it's if you're looking for one, it's from it's chemo on Amazon for like 100 bucks and totally, totally worth it. Uh, beyond that, it's just like do your maintenance regularly. 
Because if you're not doing it, it, like you're going to have a giant job or you could do it a little bit all over the time, uh, you know, a little bit of time. I've known so many people, so many new writers who just bring it to the shop immediately because they feel like they're not worthy of attempting to try. Mm -hmm. Please, for the love of God, just try because you're not going to get your bike back for a long time. They're going to butt you. You bring it when you need something that is out of your wheelhouse but yeah, not like, for like oil and f- spark plugs and air filter and that's all stuff that you could just find a youtube video for yeah you and can do it i've done i've done so much maintenance and every time i do an oil change when i go out riding afterwards for the first two or three times i'm still thinking i f-ed it up i'm like <laughs> <Yeah>. oh <laughs> my gosh i overfilled it there's too much oil in there. oh there's not enough oil in there I have so much self doubt when I when, when I have to fill fluids up specifically. That's it why I didn't want to do my fork tubes because they have to be like. Every time I do my my change on my brake fluid, I'm like, oh, I'm so far. Oh my god! And it's just like <laughs> what? It's just it's fine. You, brake fluid is yeah. so easy. It's so easy, but I I feel that way. It's like the first ride after I do that, I'm like, oh god! But it's it's never nothing's ever happened. So, what is your tip, Whitney, for beginners? My tip is do not be afraid. Um, fear is the mind killer. I really want to motivate people. Women, like I'm always commenting on, um, women's groups too. Like, do you want me to come over? Do you want me to help you? Like, don't, because it can freak people out and rightfully so. Oh yeah. Um, you feel like you could screw something up and you just spent all this money on this bike or you have no experience doing it, but I assure you, like it's the, the basic maintenance stuff is pretty easy. Mm Mm-hmm. And you did the valves on the Ural, right? Like doing valves on the Beamer, it's easy. Yeah, it was shockingly easy, actually. Right. That was my first valve job. And the process was really, really simple. Um, admittedly, they only needed to be tightened. So I didn't know what hat, like if you had to shim it or whatever, that might be a little bit more complicated. But uh, everything on the, um, on the Ural was just crazy simple. It took me like 20 minutes, I think. Yeah, there's so much on YouTube. Or like I was saying in a previous episode, when I went to ride now, the BMW department was like, look, don't bring your bike to us. It's yeah. so they were very motivating to be like, dude, this is easy. Everything's exposed. And they've printed out stuff from their, I don't know, what is that? The master the shop manual. The shop, you know, crazy thing. And um that was just super helpful and empowering. And then you get it done and you don't have to wait or wait for your bike to come in or that is really cool that they just gave you the shop manual stuff. Yeah, I Usually hope I'm not getting anybody in trouble like, for saying that, but they're they're very they're very protective of the shop manuals because then they're uh like that's literally the keys to their maintenance kingdom. Yeah, they've been like, Oh wait, you need look at page six. Okay, there's this, you know, one thing and I was like, yeah. It's like sacred knowledge. Like, give that to me. Yeah. I enjoy that. Older bikes, man, though, I don't know. That stuff can get real hairy real quick. But I was owning 60s and 70s motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you're hunting for parts in all the wrong places in Baltimore alone. (laughs) You know, it's like. That's bad. That's because back in the day, we actually didn't really know how to make a good motorcycle yet. Like that's really. What do you mean by that? I feel like there's plenty of good bikes. There are. There are some. So when I say a good bike, I'm talking about one where you don't have to like tear the whole thing apart every time you want to do something Mm. on it, you know, uh, and I'm sure Josh can attest to this fact, doing anything on the, uh, your GS 1100 is just a giant pain in the dick. You had to go all the way down to the, uh, base gasket one time, if I remember correctly on that thing. And yeah, no, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. It's just like it, from from my experience, it's just because that stuff is it's older. It's not built to modern standards, so you have to you have to go back and replace that a lot more often. Um, metallurgy is worse, so parts wear out faster. Mm. Um, really, yeah. in like the late '80s to the early '90s, we were getting good, and then like early 2000s, we figured it out. Oh, all right, interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, you read through like a really old manual and they have so many different descriptions to be able to determine the condition of the metal and things mm -hmm. that you have to know to look for, for pitting or rusting or discoloration or where, like whatever it is, it can be affected in so many ways because it's not made as well. I saw a post recently about a, a 2022 or 2023 two stroke that was tore down after being run for like 150 miles or something like that with no oil or anything at all on it. And it was in really good shape. There were a couple gears grinded, but other than that, it was like everything went back in the bike except for two gears, I think in the transmission, no oil for ran forever. Uh, and they're just make, yeah, I totally agree with you. They're getting really, really good at making these bikes. Would you work on a Yamaha? Depends. A triple? A triple? No, or would you? <sighs> When, when the XSR started reaching 32,000 miles and there were some things that I knew were coming up, I was a little hesitant. I don't really have a reason why, but I think because it's got like that modern aspect to it versus like the R9T, it's all there and it, there's no bells or whistles to f*** with. On the old one, I probably would have done it. On the new one, I'm not sure. Hmm. And I don't know why. I just don't think the, mo the modern one has a lot of extra stuff on top of yeah. it. So I'd, I'd open it up to check valves. I think checking valves, just taking the, the cover off and putting a shim in there and checking valves, I feel <laughs> comfortable. At the point right. where I have to start opening the engine fully up, that would scare me a lot. Now, if I had time and means and money, I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. I'd love to tear it up, make it super clean. I feel like that would be really cathartic. But none of us have a ton of time or all the tools or the, you know. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so maybe the, the conditions around when you do your maintenance uh, really matter a lot. The conditions of, is it your only motorcycle? Are you doing it for fun in a hobby as I kind of have? It's just been like, I don't really need to ride this bike. Right. I have other ones to ride. So it's fun to computer. let things sit. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But if it was my only bike and it was a really modern bike and uh, yeah, then maybe it does make more sense to just get it, pull the bandaid, get it done one day really quickly at the dealership and be done with it. Cause I've gotten stuck on bolts that turn projects into two day projects. You know? Yeah. Oh man. Like, have you, worst. have you snapped a bolt off? Uh, the, the, have you sheared the head of a bolt off in the thread? Absolutely. And, and the biggest That's thing is so that you fun. just do something that you don't then have the time or, or the tools uh, to, to handle. You're not prepared for it. And that's mm -hmm. like a great thing for learning. Cause every time you come up against one of those situations, you go, you figure out what tool do I need to go get to fix this? How, you know, what do I need to do to repair the damage that I've done? And you learn a ton, but if you can't, you know, let the bike sit for another day or two, then you might be in for a really bad time. One of those situations, uh, I, it's handy. Cause I know a whole bunch of dudes who do all kinds of crazy. Shit. So, my buddy JB is a really good welder. And, uh, when we were working on the van, I, we sheared off a couple of the exhaust studs mm -hmm. inside cause they're just super old and seized and they didn't put any seas in it and all that stuff. Well, long story short, sheared bolts off inside and we lost, there wasn't any nub sticking out so we couldn't grab it. So, uh, my buddy JB was able to build up a little bead of, uh, slag that just he was to able to it. just to oh, grip nice. it. And so he literally welded a tool to it and was able to turn it. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, a, that's a skill I wish I knew yes. I had. But that is that is so extra as to be Let's like... Let's all go take welding classes. Come on, it'll be fun. We can, <laughs> we can film it. We can all start building stuff. Does everyone call him JB Weld? I was about to say, I'm like, does his <laughs> I mean, that's too perfect. to be JB? Yeah. That, that should be his his uh his new business is JB Welds. That would be amazing. <laughs> but uh Josh, do you have any tips before we hand it off to the Discord boys? Um yeah, I think you I, I was trying to think about this earlier and I think don't don't be put off by this and that you feel that you need to do absolutely all your maintenance it's it's a it's not a fine line of i do my maintenance versus i don't do my maintenance i think give yourself three or four things that you're like i'm going to do these things regularly for my bike and beyond that don't feel like you have to push it because it takes a lot of tools and i feel like every time i wanted to do something i'd start it and i'd go two hours later because i'm like oh now i don't have three yeah, tools and i have to figure this out so basically like setting a limit on like for now i'm just going to do this stuff 
And then if I'm feeling comfortable, I'll step up to the next guy, right? Yeah, if we're talking beginner tips, then then absolutely. Yeah, say I want to do uh, three, four, five basic things and get really good at them and make sure you're doing them right. Learn how to check that you've done it right as well and the things to look out for to know if you haven't. If you forget to put an air filter in your bike, you need to figure out, you know, you've got way too much air flowing through it and it probably runs lean or whatever. You, you mm-hmm. know, f- figure those things out and do them really well and then just kind of add to your tool belt. Uh, cause, cause I tried to do everything and I tried to repair bikes before I even tried to do maintenance on bikes. Um, and, and that's a, that's a terrible way to go about it. It makes you feel like you can't get anything done, Yeah, and, but the small, right. the small wins spur you on to do so much more, uh, to get to get, to get to the point where you want to, you want to fabricate stuff and you want to weld and you want to build things because you know, your projects up till now have been successful. That's one thing I would recommend just building off of that is to not buy a project bike to start with. Make sure that you're just, you're starting to work on a motorcycle that already works. Like if you're going to change the chain for the first time, make sure you can go out and ride it when it's done. I wish somebody would have told me that. Whitney, what's wrong with you? Why are you an idiot? And I would have been like, oh, I don't know. It looks cool. And they're like, you're an idiot. I'd be like, okay, just buy this. It just would have saved me. I learned a lot, though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're never going to go right, especially if you live in Minnesota. The end. But with that being said, let's dive on in. We've got a handful of Discord tips. So let's see what they have to say. Starting off with the Lava Melon. Uh... Uh, the lava melon. My beginner tip is get a service manual. Whether it has to be purchasing it through official channels or less than savory means, it's easy. It's easily in the top three best things I've bought when working on my bike. Yes. Absolutely. Totally. Um, agree. I would recommend not getting the Haynes manual. Haynes manuals are nice, but the shop manual, the actual service manual, has everything in it. I had the Haynes for my DRZ, and it was okay, but uh, some of the torque specs weren't in there. That's so, annoying. Yeah, it was, it was really irritating. Um, yeah, I've noticed on the more curated books, there are certain like expectations of things that they just assume you already know. Uh, and if you're starting from the beginning, the dealership doesn't do that because they don't want to be liable for you not doing something right. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so if you're trying to find your bike's service manual, uh, you're going to find it on a forum. So you're never, you're never going to be able to Google it and it's just going to show up and you're going to download it. You're going to have to dig through some forums and sometimes you may have to pay a couple of bucks. Uh, be real careful about the payment. Usually they should be free. Um, if you go through the forums because people are sick and tired of having to hunt them down, they're always big, long forum threads threads. So keep an eye out for those. Um, Next up, we've got Bo. Beginner tip, don't turn on your bike to clean the chain. Sounds great. Who and does bad. that? <laughs> do oh, people do God. that? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I was literally on a ride with a guy who had done that a couple of days before. Um, he, he showed up at the lunch spot and all of his fingers had been sewn back on. No. Yeah. Um, the, 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 if you, if you are lucky, you'll break your fingers. If you're unlucky, you'll lose them. If you're like mega unlucky, you'll lose your arm. Oh my God. Do not. Cause, Cause people are just like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just feather it. Like, Oh, it'll just, or they'll just they'll be... pop it in gear and it oh, just kind of idles no, forward. No, 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 you need to. You, even even without the engine turning it can a chain can you up yeah it's so they're so dangerous and it drives me nuts when people say that that's a great tip what if you're just gonna spray it i'm just gonna play devil's advocate okay what if you're just spraying you know so you're spraying a cleaner and then you're spraying a lubricant or you're on the trail and you're just spraying a lubricant I think I want to make the distinction if you're putting your hands or a rag or something on the chain to remove stuff, don't have the bike on. You're gonna I fingers. would I would never put your turn your bike on and put it in gear while it's on the center stand. Just because I'd be nervous of it hopping off the center stand and then walking away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Josh, wait, what are you talking about? 
So like, like if you're uh, on a trail and you need to, like, you just start noticing that it's f***ed and you got to spray some lubricant on it. Yeah. I now I don't think it's as much of a thing with modern chains. Modern chains are super duper good, but I know I've seen a video once where, and it looked so cool where a dude like pulled a can out of his backpack, reached around <laughs> and like the wheel was spinning and like sprayed it clean and then sprayed lubricant on it. It was probably an ad for somebody. Um, but I was like, okay, well, he didn't touch it. Maybe that can be okay. And I've also seen those big uh, spray guards now. They're always mm -hmm. running Instagram ads. Um, I've never ha gotten one, but it seems like if you had one of those on, then you could spray pretty liberally and not really have to touch it too much. I hate cleaning my chain. It's one of the biggest <laughs> things that annoys me. It's so tedious, um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, expecto Delito, my number one maintenance tip, YouTube, no matter what you want to do, somebody has done it and recorded it for you. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. YouTube university is one of the best things that's happened to motorcyclists ever. Are you about to start dipping some toes in some, uh, sweet, sweet maintenance content? Yes. Yeah. Assuming that the house thing happens and I, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to buy two more of those lights or two big box lights that I can just fill the garage with light. I'm going to get a stand and then I'm going to do, you know, quick maintenance tip videos that and bomb stuff. Ass epoxy floor. It's going to be the <sighs> sexiest garage this side of Mainer. <laughs> epoxy garages are so f***ing expensive. Like I ceiling know, a garage floor is expensive. I know, but I just want to dream. Let a, let a man dream, all right? <laughs> At least paint it. You know, do it the poor man's way. Just, just get some paint on there. Yeah, paint or you could paint floor. it. Paint would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> want it to be nice i'm sure it's a bitch if you drop something though unless I mean, it was red is your garage uh epoxy this, no it feels it's really smooth so it's just good old-fashioned cement mm. at that old american cement oh, it's yeah. glossy and stuff so maybe if you spilled some oil in here it wouldn't go through the surface layer but uh yeah the i it would be really cool to do all of that uh in the new garage and that's the plan gotta make the house thing happen first <clears throat> that's a that's a good point though if we're talking maintenance so where you do your maintenance do you give people a pass if they are doing it on the side of the road or even in an apartment complex kind of stuff i mean you you work pretty hard to have a whole van now that has mm -hmm. kind of changed your maintenance routine but i've done so many of those maintenance days where i'm running tools up and down stairs and every time i need something else i've got to go back inside and it's a, <laughs> it's a pain uh, it can be done. I'd like to say it definitely can be done and you can organize your tools in a way where within one carry you can fit most of your stuff, but it makes it so much easier if you can just turn around and grab a tool you didn't think you needed when you started the project. Yeah. I used to work on the roof of my garage, uh, at my current place, but now that I have the van, I can actually, I, I have the van parked next to an outlet so I can set the lights up in the garage and uh, it's usually cooler. It's quieter. Um, yes. I was begging you to use my garage when I saw you on your roof. I was like, dude, yeah. here's the code. Come over whenever you want. Yeah. And with the van, I can literally just slide the door open and all of my tools are there. Yeah. Um, How about I just worry awesome. about your, your thieves thieving. Nobody they has made it inside the van yet. They took your catalytic converter. They took all your crap. <laughs> literally, literally, they in theory they could uh, bust one of the windows and get in there. Um, but uh, right now, nobody's actually gotten in the van. It's really hard to see that there's anything in there because it do, a it doesn't have any um it doesn't have any stickers or livery on the side so it doesn't look like a work Looks van. Looks like yeah, this is full it's just of a it's just some blood. meth head van. Uh and the windows are so heavily tinted that you can't look through it. Nice. They're they're like crazy tinted. Um but yeah, it's uh it's definitely nice to have a spot for all your tools. So important. Or just be the soldier that, you know, be the best you can be and just do it wherever you can. I know Ari uh, used to do that with his bike when he was work living out of an apartment. He was just doing it in a parking spot. So the job can get done. 
Quips and Guac, beginner bike tip. If you have a sport bike or a naked bike, the best maintenance tip is a very underrated mod. You can get fixed spacers that fit your wheel. Get them. Taking a rear wheel off is easy, but putting them back on and having the spacers come off as you're trying to put it back in is a pain in the rear. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure, Josh, you're super familiar with this. Have you tried to fit up a bunch of tires to your bikes? Yeah. No. It's such a pain in the ass. Yes. It's so what he's talking about are the little spacers that are uh between your uh uh swing arm and the actual wheel itself. And they, they basically make sure that it's in the middle of the bike because your your swing arm is never actually perfectly uniform. Hmm. So there's these little spacers in there and you have to fit them inside the wheel and then set the wheel inside mm. the swing arm and then put the axle through. So yeah, if you could get fixed spacers so that they just always there, that would be really cool. I actually didn't know that those were a thing. Oh, yeah, I'd never heard of that. Yeah, same here. I uh, definitely want some. It is such a pain because even when you, th especially when you're doing it by yourself, I think that's the biggest thing. Yes. A lot of times you're doing this by yourself and you've got the wheel like on your foot so you can try and lift it up and get the axle lined up and then you knock a spacer out. Uh, let me, let me, let me do a Google up. here. Fixed, fixed motorcycle wheel. See if these are like because I've I've literally never heard of them. So CNC, this is from racingproducts.com, fixed captive wheel spacers for Prilius, BMW, Honda, Cowies. So for all the like the super sports, that's cool. Um that would be that super cool. duper handy. Heck yeah. And they're and they're um angled, so they're not totally straight. So that literally will just slide into place. I remember That's awesome. having huge issues getting my rear XSR tire on. And I kept thinking it was, what's the rubber padding underneath there? So there's the bushings that are in the, the um, it's like under when you under the sprocket. Yeah. Yeah. The, those are uh, cush, cush drive, cush drive. I kept thinking it was a cush drive and it was so wonky and I kept adjusting it and they were lined up on both sides. I gave up, brought it to a shop in town, and they were like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, I don't know. And I wonder if that would have would have helped solve the alignment issue for the rear. Because that's kind of what it's helping do, right? It's This is, so the Kush drive would be behind this guy. No, I know. But we. I just thought it was the Kush drive because it was like, it wouldn't align properly. Hmm. I have run a bike on the road with spacers on the either wrong side or wrong direction. You know, <laughs> if you get them flipped around the wrong way and you've got your wheel off center a little bit, I know I've definitely had a buddy who looked at a wheel and was like, what the heck did you do? <laughs> that does not look right at all. <laughs> I got to uh, imagine it felt really funny. Yeah. Well, Josh, are you frozen? The, only on if you end? know better. Um, yeah, I'm frozen on my end. Frozen on your end? Oh, yeah. yeah. People have Lovely. been calling you Elta. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I it's because I talked about the GoPro being so good. Yeah, yeah, dude. We've just been we've been playing through. <laughs> we'll put different disguises on you and post. Yep. Uh, China Shite Bike Boy. A couple motorcycle maintenance tips that I can think of is first to invest in decent set of hand tools. Uh, T bar uh, handle. Allen's are a yes, great choice. Yes. Those are great tools. And you can get them. I have a set from Harbor Freight, which is awesome. Uh, second tip is that if you have a problem you can't seem to figure out on your own, John, join an online forum for your motorcycle. Forums, I find that usually you end up finding the answer on like old threads. They're usually not super active from what I can tell. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, it, old internet lore. Like, yeah. I, like I feel like I found a good one when it was answered in 03. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, this is the this is the answer with 420 up likes. I got to imagine going through forums is just like you you've become the forum ninja going through all your problems with the GS and the uh, old um, SVs, right? I don't know. I don't really like forums, honestly. I don't like reading through them and 
I feel like forums are a car world thing too. Like people I know who are crossovers that like cars and motorcycles. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really good car forums. Yeah. So. yeah. If it's big enough, I'm sure it'll get distilled down to the good stuff and you can find that. But I, I'm a big, um, maybe I've just been lucky, but I think you got to find people with this information who you can trust. The information is out there. There's a lot of people who know this stuff and know how to work on bikes. And like, like you have your buddy, Don, I, I had my buddy, Will, when I lived in Austin, uh, who I could call and pretty much knew how to solve any of those problems. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's somebody at a shop who you befriend or just, uh, you know, ask additional questions to, I, yeah, the information is out there. Um, and yes, YouTube is catching up and more and more videos are becoming available, especially if you've got a bike that's a little bit older, but I don't know, forums kind of annoy me more than, <laughs> I, I never feel like it's a really positive experience. And, and what ends up happening for me is I read the forum. I, I see someone explain the exact problem that I'm experiencing. I go and implement the changes that they say fix theirs and it doesn't work. So then I continue reading down further into the forum <laughs> and then find someone else's answer that solves the problem that they're experiencing. And then I go and try that fix. Uh, and I don't know, it's, it's not a great diagnostic tool for me. Maybe if it's specifically instructions on how to get something done the right way. Um, diagnostics though, it drives me up a wall. I feel like the best tip is buy your local mechanic a beer. Or <laughs> best case. friends with him. Yeah. That's that's gonna up. get that's gonna get you so far in life. Uh, let's move on to Full Metal Corgi. You do not need expensive tools. Harbor Freight sockets and wrenches work just fine for ninety nine point nine nine percent of what most people will do. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Spend spend your money on good torque wrenches. I think. What's but... that tool carrier that Motivation started carrying? Like with the blue, they started carrying like that. And Moto GP, shit. they're called beta. beta. Yeah, beta tools. I know, but yeah. wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> if, <laughs> so you know, for us who just ride on the street sometimes and dick around. When I was uh, when I was working on projects, and I used to go over to Motivation, Nate would hand me a couple of beta tools just to hold. Yeah, just to, like no, he newborn? would like give them to us because he's like, "This is going to come in really handy when you're working on this part," mm. and. I've used a couple of beta tools and I actually have a set of beta screwdrivers because I got them in a box. That... Do you notice a big difference or do they do the same? I mean, they're <laughs> screwdrivers. I, I'm always looking at like the ones that are up on the wall, you know, like the yeah. ones that you don't need. Like they're good, but I don't know. You can break a beta tool just as bad <laughs> as you can break anything else. So there's levels to it. You don't need expensive tools, but you do need the right tool for the job. If you're going yes. in there and trying to remove Phillips head screws with a super narrow, tiny, like not number two, number three, you know, Phillips head screw driver, you're going to strip them and you're going to, you know, cause yourself to have a much worse time than you need. Uh, Cause yeah. like I got all my tools hand me down. I think when I, when I was moving out, I had like a box and my dad just like filled it up with all of his spares oh, basically. That and broken so ones. nice. I mean, but I always felt like I was like, oh, I have tools. I don't need to go buy a toolkit. And it wasn't until I was older that I was like, okay, I'm gonna actually buy a tool kit that is organized and I know where everything is before it's just a, a big jumbled bag of tools. And it got the job done, but yeah, it's it's like, oh, I don't have the tool. Okay, I'm gonna go to AutoZone, I'll get one. <laughs> yep. Every every project I did. Yeah, it's it's nice to have um it's nice to have a wide variety. Like I have 12 point and six point sockets. I have all the different numbered, um, screwdriver heads. Uh, that's really nice, but you can usually get by with like your basic tools for most things. As long as you're super careful with what you're doing, I've used the wrong tool for the job and been okay a handful of times, but I wouldn't recommend it. Yep. Uh, diabetes man maintenance tip for new folks start all threaded things by hand before using a tool <laughs> oh my god yes this yeah. oh, it w if i'd have known this this is why i used to be so anti-power tool um because people will just you know they'll grab their impact and brrr, a bolt they, they, they start it with a fucking impact and it's like, of course you tore the threads out. What did you think was going to happen? I always bottom a screw out by hand. Like I, I'll go as finger tight as I can get it 
and then I'll use a socket. Yes, you are very anal about that. Mm-hmm. Yep, most screws are harder than the metal that they're going into when you're working on a motorcycle. Your frame, yes. your engine, like those are softer metals than a lot of the ni nice bolts that are going in there. You will completely make your own new threads and they'll be all <laughs> cross-threaded with the original ones if you just start driving it in there. And it's worth pointing out, too, that if you have a steel screw going into aluminum, it takes a lot less torque than you think to tear the threads yes. out. Yes. So just be super duper careful. Uh, most most screws are just bottom it out plus a nudge, and that's all you need. Abhijitem. <laughs> okay. Uh, beginner maintenance tip. I started working on my bike about six months into buying it. First things I got were a paddock stand. Uh, spools and a high quality paddock stand bulldog woodcraft brands like that dude i still don't have a goddamn stand for the r9t and i it drives me nuts do you have a center stand for it no i would just get a center <laughs> stand well now it's now it's on the chopping block so it doesn't matter but i yeah. went well it's it's new since 2018 so it's not like i'm like digging in there all that much everything i've done didn't need a center stand for yeah i mean unless you're unless you're taking the wheels off you don't need a no. you don't need a stand so it won't go on a rear stand? Is it too wide or what's the It's problem? a single-sided swing arm oh, gotcha. and a funny little BMW back axle jammer. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Have you ever done it with a, like a car jack, two by four and a car jack from the middle? I've um, done that with the Husqvarna when the kickstand mm -hmm. flew off. <laughs> I was like, this is going to sit on a car stand. It'll get the job done, but it's <laughs> yeah, sketchy. No. I've taken I've taken a bike on a front stand and, oh. and not like the the head stand, like at the front the the bottom of the fork tubes, and then a rear stand, taking both wheels off, run to cycle gear, run back with new tires, and then try and put them on. And I'm like, oh good, the bike was still standing, but a strong <laughs> gust of wind would have made that a whole lot worse. That is very brave of you, because that was I was just thinking about doing that to get the flat fixed, but I was like. It's just not worth almost tipping the bike, you know, if you're going to throw it yeah. on. A... Do you have the tool to get the rear wheel off? That's a good question. I don't know. Because if you do, I've got a jack stand that'll work. You do? Mm -hmm. Which jack stand do you have? Uh, one of oh, the, the ones new that, one? Yeah, one of the Discord oh, boys cool. gave me. That, that one will be perfect for it. Yeah. Uh, but with that, we have hit the end of our maintenance suggestions, and we are going to dive into roasting a couple of Discord bikes just for shits and giggles. So, because uh, we are also running up on time, it so goes gonna... by so quick, doesn't it? it does. oh, when you're having fun, that's, I will say bikes. that, like lately, I've been I've been de-stressed a little bit. Oh, I've got my God. tax stuff you know sorted what? out. Your skin and... looks Whoa. good. You're looking you're looking a little <laughs> bit more relaxed. So today is just all about having fun. So uh, diving in, we've got Expecto Delito. Oh, I need to share oh, He's got screen. a new bike. He gets a new bike like every few weeks. That's my kind of guy. He, he, like, he had the rocket for a while and then he got bored. And now he's like, yeah, I have a GSA, a 1250 Hell GSA. Yeah. The full Mamma Jamba. This, Look at that. This is the dad bike supreme. Um, wow. And he's he's already got the like $150 little uh, windscreen thingamajig. So that that little. That's an add-on? Yeah, that's an add-on. And it caught it. So it's a windscreen spoiler. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Uh, I believe in you, internet. That that loaded like a straight up dial up. <laughs> you can only see half the boobs. You're like, come on, man. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> Look at that. Going top back to case. Web 1.0. You can deliver pizza in that thing. That so they didn't make huge. it uh this guy they didn't right there. make it long enough so you got to get an attachment to so it just helps adjust where the wind goes over your head that is so... some serious writing yeah. i guess you don't want to be blast when you're blasted in the helmet for long periods of time that sucks donkey dick it definitely does and so that that little um that little screen doodad it actually does good work um that's a sexy looking bike right there look at how fresh it is He's, I don't think he's even taking it off road. That's okay. We've <laughs> that's, accepted that as that's that. Yeah, I mean these are these it. are cafe bikes. 
the new the new version of the cafe bike, the GSA twelve fifty. Uh, what is that? Oh, Lego also, Fat Boy. Uh, Full Metal says you have to do Nexus, so we just got to make sure that we. Okay, well, let me go find that one. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be in here somewhere. Ride Red T Fits. Uh, where is it? I'm scrolling past next, everybody next, trying to find next. him. Next, wait, wait, wait. Did you just pass that? Yeah. That's Gen Z Hyperweeb. Isn't that not next? Is that not next? Next? Are you or do they just have the same little anime lady? <laughs> it sounds like a f-ing grandma. <laughs> you guys got that little, that little anime lady? Uh, same cute I think little this, picture. I think it's him. Yeah. Let's see. Yep. That's, that's next. Gotta that's gotta be next. Him, yeah. Okay. Uh, is this what I wait? So that's a Himalayan and a V star dude. Stickers do not make you go faster, bro. God damn. This man puts <laughs> hot dogs in his, I forget what he was eating, but that is so many anime stickers. Oh, Vulcan. Oh no. Oh, Does he have um stickers? Does he have bumper stickers on the swing arm? Like that other guy? Oh my god! <laughs> I'll never forget that. Leave that guy alone. The cringiest <laughs> stickers. No Leave him alone. <laughs> it's, like, it's just for you. They were the cringiest stickers I've Not ever all seen. Not the wonder lost. Oh yeah, yeah. Wasn't there a ride fast, don't die too? I think on one side there was ride fast, don't die. Um. Okay. Wow. The Vulcan six fifty. All right, let it all out. Come on, take a deep breath. I don't think it's as bad as a Versus 650, but it is the most boring and plain cruiser I've ever seen. And no matter how many anime stickers you put on it, you're not going to make it interesting. Ooh. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, Himalayan, though, I I do really like the Himalayan. Um, so are these all of his bikes or are these iterations? Like this is his oldest bike. This is his new bike. I, I think they're all the his. I know that I know that every time he tries to start the V star 1100, it catches on fire. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wait, why so, does it do that? Because I think he broke it or he bought it broken for real cheap. Something like that. The man has a monster can on his exhaust says magic toaster. That's I was like, what is that? Oh yeah, look at that. There it is. Wow, Let me see if I can beautiful. make it bigger so we can see it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, he even heat wrapped the exhaust. That's so cute. It's not gonna make it cool though. Wow. That's a piece right there. <laughs> you should uh, make that emoji in your uh Discord. That's brutal, dude. The, the, like <laughs> I does that if reflect, you're having fun, does, that's all that it, matters. Does that reflect you buy for love next? for someone's bike or disdain for someone's bike? Does it? Do they hurt, hate their bike or do they love their bike? Based this on the stickers, if you saw bike. it in a parking lot, what do you think? This dude loves his bike. He's having fun with it. That's what I think too. Yeah, but that's the only that's the only thing I can it's say a, about is it. Is that a water bottle? Over? Yeah, it's a little water bottle. Wow, He's got a little water I bottle guy right there. <laughs> Uh, but we skipped past so many boys just to find <laughs> that because we had... I, I that was a good one. That was a good 650s. one. Oh, God. All right, but you also put spite in a bad mood. <laughs> uh, oh, man. A 2013 FZ8 from Breadneck. These are really cool. Nice. Um, he's even got a little video. I didn't know you could even get a Power <laughs> Commander 5 for these. Uh, I thought they were too old. Um, FZ8s are cool little bikes. They really are. Um, they're like a little bit tamer than the uh FZ1. Um, I think is it a triple or is it inline four? Inline yeah, I was four. The same thing. How many pipes are there? Four of them. It's a, yeah, it's an inline four. Um, yep. Handles pretty good. Uh, and you can get them so crazy cheap too, which that's the best part about these. You see these going for like three or four grand and they're such a great bike. And this is what I'm talking about. Low, um, low strung inline four that'll last forever. Yep. Um, they're ugly, but they just, they just work. What do you think is uglier? Is it this or the new MTs? The new MTs. 
but but how they ride i'd still pick an mt yeah yeah that looks classic it's kind of ugly but from the <laughs> from the rider's seat there it's a lot more zoom in on it yeah i like the headlight better than the mts yeah I, think, I still feel like you could pop. You could probably prop a uh, prop. You could pop a round headlight on this really quickly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that would that would look sweet on this for sure. Um. Next up, we've got Corgi has a CB125 resto bike. This one's a uh, man after your own heart here with this. He, uh, I was confusing right? it with one that Very he just cool. bought, but I think it was just the frame for a. Uh, an electric conversion. Yeah, look at that on the other picture that you can just burn the hell out of your thigh. Yeah, yeah burn yeah. it up. <laughs> look at the brake pedal too. It's like super crazy long. The Rebel, um, the Rebel 250 has the same brake pedal. Feels like ass. Well, it has to be long. You have to apply like a hundred pounds of force to get the thing to stop. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You need all the leverage you can have. This. Oh, this is fucking cool. The 1987 Magna when these run, Magna. they're so awesome. Never heard of it. Super uh, cool. V4 cruiser. Before Ooh. this was between the VMAX 1 and VMAX 2 that was the Magna. With, that's interesting. Yeah. And you can you can get these in good running order and they're so so cool. They sound great. They look cool. It kind of looks like a um like an older version of the Fat Bob, doesn't it? It looks awesome. Oh, I'm confusing it for the Fat Boy. Yeah, Not no, the Fat Boy. Fat Bob. Fat Bob. The one you like. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what I want to know. How many carburetors? Is it just two? Ooh, let's see. Because that would be awesome if it's not four of them. Let's do a Google Yamaha uh, Magna Carbs. It's not a Honda. And survey says eBay doesn't tell me. Uh, no. 1982 Carbs. Oh God! <laughs> oh no! Tell from here, it looks so. This looks like a uh, two carb setup. All right, good. <laughs> That's what we wanted. Yeah, but that looks complicated as f- Ooh, Pass, pass, pass. No. no. You need to make sure it runs. If you're going to buy a Magna, make sure it runs. Uh, Okay. Lava Melon here with a... They... Oh, <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Night, night. We went to sleep. Good night. <laughs> um, little R7. R7. Taking, taking a little nap by the garbage cans. Um. This is why you got to get, uh, uh, what are they called? Case covers. No, the, the what sliders. are the pucks that stick out? Frame sliders. Frame sliders. Frame sliders. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the white. Yeah. The yeah. white looks, the white looks nice. Yeah. With the red wheels. Oof. This thing looks classy. I, I, the more I look at it, the more I really like the white. Yeah, the the white with the black looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looks good. And these things are so much fun around a racetrack. They're like a perfect little entry level track bike. Ton of fun. I like it. Uh, next up, we've just got a simple little Kawasaki something. Does not say what. Let me make it bigger. See if I can read what's on the tail. ER5. <laughs> ER5. All right. So, um 500? Yeah, it's the it's the old 500 parallel twin. How so, old? I mean, they 90s? were making these it's until like So you could buy a 5N until like the mid 2000s if I'm oh, not mistaken. Okay. Um and they look just like this. So they look look like this from the mid 90s to the mid 2000s. Because it was like the Ninja 250, which ran from like 1985 to 2007, completely unchanged. Yeah, I think it has pretty. How exactly you do? I think it has pretty inoffensive looks. You know, a lot of the bikes from that era, ugly. 
like with yes, 250 sport agree. bikes and stuff like that. Like, oh my gosh, get it out of here. But that just kind of, that looks like motorcycle. It does look like motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Cool. I don't, you don't see too many of these around. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's air cooled. Yeah, it's fins. May, no, maybe that's yeah. a little radiator and it just has fins. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what do we got here? This is an 07 CBR from Ride Red that he has since sold and picked up a T120 Bonnie. Kind of a, a little jump there, right? Jumping genres. I think his yeah. back was just tired. Yes, I was so <laughs> tired too. It's a journey, right? You, you, sometimes <laughs> you got to get off the super sport and get on a standard. I like that jump. Don't you hate the Bonnies, Josh? Don't, don't you not like the way that they ride? Yeah, I don't, I don't love the Bonnies. Yeah. I have, yeah, I've never had an interest. It's so weird. Really? I think that that looks cool, though, comparatively. I'm like, oh, I'd pick the. Have you ridden one of these? Triumph. I don't think so. I kind of, I, I like the way they sound. They sound really good and they, they're they really smooth. Once you, again, you, you were talking about the Triumph throttle. The, th the Triumph on all their bikes, save the uh, Trident. The throttle feels awesome. Okay. The only one I remember riding is the Trident. Yeah. The Trident was okay. It was fun. You were on the Ducati and I was trying to keep up with you on the on Mopac. Which one was this? I was on the Trident. You were on the Ducati and you were just miles ahead of me. And I was like, <laughs> it was like 85. It didn't, I was like, all right. Yeah, it was. It's a it's a good little beginner bike. Um, I've seen a couple here in town, a couple mm -hmm. here in person. I would recommend a Trident over a Versus. Yeah, any day of the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, T fits. Okay, so this is one that I really need to ride, and I still haven't, and it drives me nuts. Is he in Texas? He must be. The way you're saying that. I don't. Well, I mean, I'm not or sure if he's in Texas. It's ride. the bike specifically. Oh, okay. So this is the CB 1000 R. Mm. Um, this is Honda's Hyper Naked, the inline four. It's like they're Super Hornet again. All right. Um, yeah. I haven't ridden one, and I'd be very interested to see what it's like. Um, they look interesting. This, I think, this is the black edition too, which is like the super fancy looking one. Um, I bet it sounds great with that exhaust. Yeah, I bet it sounds really cool. The only problem is, I wonder if the Honda Inline Four. I wonder how it feels. I gotta imagine it feels like it came right out of a car. Why? Just because Honda Honda engines don't really have a lot of panache. They work forever and they sound good, but they just they're not really inspiring. The only ones that no, I've felt I from. I feel like they were so ahead of their time, however many decades ago, and they were really pushing the envelope and they were fing awesome. But then they just felt like they became like design wise, they weren't really pretty. They're just like really all built by machines and mm -hmm. they didn't really care. And it was dialed in and they moved on to other shit, which is what it felt like. Their mid 2000 inline fours are chef's kiss good. They're mm -hmm. all awesome. I love them all. And then everybody retired. And then everybody retired. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I do still want to ride it. I think it's outrageously it's a, it, over expensive for what it is. How much is it's it? A Honda. Uh, I think the black edition. I'm, I'm gonna pull this up just for giggles. Price on them is actually it's not too bad. Wow. So they're twelve nine nine nine. Okay, that's not too bad. The black. Oh, and that is for the black. Actually, I take that back. That's a great price for that motorcycle. For 140 horsepower, which I think is what that makes. Sure. Oh, that, that wheel looks good, too. It's got the single-sided swing arm. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Find something interesting, because unfortunately, Stank Nooner and MT-07. <laughs> everybody's got one. Uh, Gladius, Josh, what do you think about the Gladius? Go. Oh, uh, I love the Gladius. I've got no issue with it. I don't think it looks great, but that's okay. I don't necessarily think all SVs look absolutely great. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I haven't ridden one, though. So, you know, maybe I'd jump on one and I'd have a different opinion. But at this point, I have no reason to dislike them. And I know they, even still today, used, uh, they are discounted. For as new as they are, um, 
you know, because before that you've got to go to a, a second gen like I have, and that's that's an old bike now. That's a almost you know twenty year old bike. So uh, yeah, go for it, ride them. Those things are out there and they need to be ridden. Like yeah, this one here, it's it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna see if I can make it bigger. Yeah, what's with these faraway pictures, guys? Man, that is clean. Yeah, that... Holy cow. I like how that looks. It looks like a beefy beefcake. I like that frame too. Yeah. That's actually really solid. Are those beefy, you know, you look at wheels and know. Probably because you're a dude. Are those beefy wheels? That that rear looks beefy, or is it just like the perspective? I think it's the perspective. Uh, SVs run 160s at the rear, oh, so they're actually a little bit smaller, right? Am I right? You're right, yeah. But a lot of people put 180s on them, you know. Track Can you case. squeeze a 180 on there? Yep. It will right. go. Yep. Okay. Uh, blotter, V-Strom. These oh. are. Ugly. Yeah, that I do not understand. <laughs> These are so ugly. Oh my god! And um, they just look—they look ginormous, and they look when dude. Everything about that is ugly. Look at that exhaust. It's like so, <laughs> like the person who designed it was blind. What are you doing? From behind, it literally looks like a gigantic scooter. What is wrong? Wait, who makes that? Suzuki. <laughs> well, they don't make it anymore. They make the DE. What the f yeah. Look at that. That's like a blob from here. Yeah, it's it's, it's an, an amorphous blob. This is an ugly motorcycle. Oh my god. It this probably runs and you probably can't even hear it. I bet there's like no sound that comes out of that motorcycle. Oh yeah. But absolute whisper yeah, look quiet. At that bread box. Mm -hmm. It's massive. Oh, there's that's twin a gigantic pipes. top case. And he's got your butt sticker on there. Oh, I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> i take it all back you're the nicest sweetest <laughs> no, i don't ha i don't ever knock the rider you know it's like i haven't ridden it so i don't know but god damn that there's no curves to it yeah it is such there's no a, lines curves. such an ugly motorcycle <laughs> i'm sure it does the thing but yikes also that windshield looks like it's the size of a boogie board what year is that? Uh, Boney. It looks like a Stromboni. I have no idea. No, no, no. mid to mid, mid to late twenty teens. Oh six, yeah, early early two thousands. Ah, uh, yeah. That that was an early two thousands bike for sure. It looked like it. Yeah. So Nest Cafe here, uh, V eighty five TT in a giant arrow stitch banana suit. Dude, banana suits are where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. They save your ass. Um. So I was actually he was on the Twisted Sisters ride, and I'm not gonna lie. When we were running through the rain, I was definitely a little jealous of the Arrow Stitch. Yes. I need to get myself a nice mm -hmm. adventure suit. Yes. But then again, I could just put the bike in the van and then not have to ride in the rain anymore. That's the plan. That's the plan. Uh, let's do a couple what? more real quick to say. round out. Um, see if there's anything interesting. Uh, okay. There's that's, <laughs> that's definitely fake, but yeah. <laughs> I like how the bike is on the side. That's, that's just toaster doing toaster for you. Um, let's see. Okay. Last one. Summit Coyote with the 300 NK. This is a CF oh, moto. How do you like that, Coyote? What do you guys think of the uh, looks on this guy? Because this is one that I actually think is a little bit polarizing. I could see somebody liking it, and I could see somebody being like, that is the ugliest thing ever. I don't like it, yeah. but at the price point, I don't care. That's mm -hmm. true. You know, you're like, God damn, I can get that for how much are those? Four or like five grand? Three grand, four grand. Three grand! I, I, no I think way. they're like I think they're I think they're exactly four grand for the the NK. Yeah. I mean, I and if you're comparing it to a Honda Grom, I don't like the way Groms look either. But yeah, no one complains but I'd about that. Them. Yeah, absolutely. I would rather have this than a Grom. Are you kidding me? Oh, totally. I, I absolutely would. Thirty nine ninety nine. I'm Whoa! To ride the, the four fifty. You don't care what it looks like at that point because what's your payment? A dollar a month? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. 
that is stupid cheap. Um, yeah. That is the beauty of these CF motos. I really got to ride some more. It's going to be at Coda. Send, we can go send, this weekend. They're bringing yeah. all the bikes to Coda. That's what he was talking about. Send me send me your guys' guy guys okay. number. I want to <laughs> I want to ride some CF Moto bikes. Yeah, I mean CF Moto to. possible sponsor. He has the new 450 SS there and it just launched in the US. So Yeah, that's going to slam. It's going to slam so hard. It's going to be a good bike. Um okay. We are now officially over an hour and 10 minutes. So with that, we're going to call it a day. And next time we will be bringing the meme contest back with what some is it? Diet Coke sponsorship. Oh, yeah, memes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, this is so, going to be a good one. Oh, nice. the, the point with the Diet Coke sponsor memes is to basically, I'm, I'm, I'm always got, I've got me a Diet Coke usually around. That's the only thing I'm addicted to His, other than uh, a good time. DCA, your alcohol or your Diet Coke blood content is very high. Is very high. Yes. He's mostly Diet Coke. Uh, don't don't talk to me until I've had my Diet Coke <laughs> in the morning. Um, I literally don't drink coffee. So uh, make yourself some memes or uh, like basically anything with me and Diet Coke. But I would love to see you guys going after like you're making the elevator pitch. Yeah, we want to see Spite's some... Corner like ele- elevator pitch to Diet Coke or to Coke. For a sponsorship, that I would love. I think when you're when, when a Cardo's on the line, they gotta be good. Yeah, so we're gonna be giving away another Cardo next week. So bring your A game and make the best Diet Coke sponsorship memes that you possibly can. Uh, we're looking for videos. We're looking for stuff that's going to make us laugh our asses off because there were some in the last run which i still got to post some up to instagram they made literally made me snort while we were watching one of them (laughs) broke us yes (laughs) they they were so good so you're gonna bring the heat next week hopefully with your memes and uh there will be a cardo up on offer if you are out there at the tail end of this podcast and you would like to join in potentially win a cardo all of the information is down in the description below, uh, and I just realized now, f- Josh, where can they go to find the audio only version? Yeah, absolutely, uh, it is a, it pretty much all the main places you go to look for a podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Spotify, it's on Google Podcast, and some other services here and there, like iHeartMedia and some podcast apps. Um, Pan- but Pandora. yeah, sweet. Uh, yeah, and all yeah, they got to do is search for Bottom Sprocket. Yeah, Bottom Sprocket, it'll come up. Sweet, because I'm the kind of moron who just wish, listens to all my podcasts on YouTube. So I just assumed everybody else would do it. No, wow. I'm an audio only sort of freak. Yeah. Yep, I use Google. Well, uh, you can find it in all those places. And uh, because I forgot about this until the very end, I will have probably <laughs> shoehorned something in the beginning. Yeah. But with that, we're going to call it a night and we're going to call it a podcast. See you next week for some glorious memes. Yeah.